Bob Duco, Evangelical Radio Christian talk show host and apologist, has been piecing together so-called prophecies from the Bible supposedly regarding Jesus Christ in an effort to demonstrate that the Bible is true. In this episode, it's prophesied in Hosea 11 that he would take flight to Egypt. It says, when Israel was a youth, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. And what source does the apologist use to confirm this incredibly specific prophecy concerning Jesus of Nazareth? Sure enough, in Matthew 2, 14 and 15, it says, And he arose and took the child, Jesus, and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, and what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Out of Egypt did I call my son. To be fair to the apologists, they are not the ones scouring the Hebrew Bible trying to strain whatever potential mention of Jesus they can from any source that looks like, or can be made to look like, it refers to their Savior. The so-called prophecy of Jesus' flight into and eventual call out of Egypt was invented by the author of Matthew, as any mention of such an escape and return is completely absent from Mark's Gospel, as it is missing from Luke's and John's the book of Acts, and in any of the epistles. Jose 11, to which the author of Matthew likely referred, has nothing to do with an eventual Messiah to be born in the late first century BCE. It is a passage, not a prophecy, about the history of Israel. The son of the passage is Israel itself. Read in context, this is abundantly clear. When Israel was a child, I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. From the context of Hosea 11, it is clear that the son being called out of Egypt is Israel, and that this isn't any sort of prophecy, but a reminder of Israel's release from bondage by Yahweh through the deeds of Moses. Some apologists acknowledge this original context of Hosea 11, and yet are forced to defend it as also a future prophecy regarding Jesus because of Matthew's Gospel. Some have done this by inventing something called a double fulfillment for the verse, so that it will apply to both Israel and Jesus. Census plenior is another term given to this apologetic, and it's an idea that a verse or passage from the Hebrew text has a straightforward literal meaning, but also contains a second, more esoteric or opaque meaning, often understood to be part of God's intent of the text. This second, more esoteric meaning was hidden from the original author's mind as he wrote his text under divine inspiration, but can be revealed through the Holy Spirit to later authors and interpreters of the text, like the author of Matthew's Gospel. The self-serving function of this apologetic should be clear. Passages can have this double meaning when, and only when, it serves a particular apologetic purpose. It isn't something objectively found in the text, but teased out under a decidedly Christian influence. Jewish scholars agree that Hosea is merely referencing the Exodus as a way of telling its audience that Yahweh has a special relationship with Israel. Israel is like a son to God, and more than just a son, but actually God's firstborn son. In Exodus 4, we see this same reference to Israel as a son. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders that I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart, so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. I said to you, Let my son go, that he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go. Now I will kill your firstborn son. To suggest that the passage from Hosea, which also references Israel as God's son, is instead a reference to Jesus, is purely a Christian apologetic construct, and misses the entire point of Matthew's Gospel, which was to provide a connection between Jesus and Israel, not as a literal fulfillment of prophecy. For Matthew's author, Jesus was the new Israel, the true Son of God. 
The author of Matthew's Gospel was likely a Jewish Christian, writing for a community of other Jewish Christians, as opposed to Gentile Christians. The author found it important to write what he felt were similarities between the nation of Israel and the life of Jesus, to establish for his community this recognition of Jesus as the true Israel, as God's true firstborn son. As Dale Allison Jr. notes in his book, The New Moses, in ancient Jewish sources concerned with eschatological matters, the redemption from Egypt often serves as a type for the messianic redemption, and the prospect of a new exodus is held forth. Before the consummation, there will be another exodus, followed by another return. In view of this well-attested fact, it would, I think, have been no extraordinary thing for Matthew to have found such expectation played out in the life of the Messiah. All this suggests that 2.15 is a typological interpretation of Jesus' story. Allison goes on to quote from another commentator on the Gospel of Matthew, R.T. France. Hosea's words are not a prediction, but an account of Israel's origin. Matthew's quotation thus depends for its validity on the recognition of Jesus as the true Israel, a typological theme found elsewhere in the New Testament, and most obviously paralleled in Matthew by Jesus' use of Israel texts in the wilderness. There, too, it is as God's Son that Jesus is equated with Israel. In other words, Hosea as fulfilled prophecy exists only in the befuddled minds of Christian apologists. The author of Matthew had combed through the Hebrew Bible in search of ways to parallel passages there to establish Jesus as God's true and obedient Son. If God could call Israel Son, how much more so the Messiah, Jesus, was Matthew's thinking. Matthew's author then constructed a narrative in which Jesus fulfilled, in a typological sense, the role of Israel, the role of God's Son. There never was a historical flight of Jesus and his family to and call from Egypt. Jesus fulfilled this typology not in history, not as prophecy fulfilled, but in the faith community of Matthew's early Jewish Christians as the true Son of God. Funding for this program was provided in part by Cody Seaton and from the generous contributions of other viewers like you via Patreon. Consider joining them at www.patreon.com forward slash Bible Skeptic. Thank you.